hey guys welcome to coding simplified and today we'll see about the depth first search algorithm that how we can use it and at the last we'll see how we can implement it using java code so first of all let's see all the properties about depth first search algorithm so basically as it name suggests like first we go in the depth of of an element and once we cover all the depth then we go into its next neighbor so for example you can see like if this is a starting point of a graph so this is a graph and we have given a starting point a so if you start from the first neighbor which is b so first you go b and then rather than going to the d which is the next neighbor of a first we go c right so basically first we are covering the depth right and once we have covered the b and c and then we come here on the d and then we cover the e and f right so this is how we can uh, this is the property of depth first search first you go depth and then we go the in the breadth like neighbor wise so in last tutorial we also explained about the breadth first search which basically first go in all the neighbors and then it go into deep levels right so if you have the doubt about the breadth first search so you can also see that previous tutorial where we explained about the breadth first search so now let's see how we can use the depth first search in the graph right so this is a graph and where we have this a b c all are the vertex so vertex is means that each vertex has have the two property one we have the label so basically this a b c are the labels and then we have the visited node like whether they are visited or not so we have basically the boolean variable and as soon and as accordingly we visit the element we mark them as visited true so by default all are false so as soon as we visit them we visit them we mark them visited as true so that helps us basically to identify that whether we have visited them already or not right so that is why we have the this ages so ages means uh, we represent ages them as a adjacent matrix adjacent matrix so adjacent matrix means like if there is a a is between a and b so we'll say that adjacent matrix of 0 and 1 so basically a is the zero index and b is the one index so these all elements are placed according to the index so because whenever we add the vertex so we have that index so this is zero then one index two index three index fourth and fifth right so we can say there is a a is between a and b it means there is a, a is between zero and one right so we can say we have the adjacent matrix 0 and but 1 as well as the 1 and 0 also 1 because it is a undirected graph so in undirected graph we have both the adjacent matrix as 1 so we can represent them as a is or as a 1 right so these are the properties of the graph that we have the uh, vertex we have the edges and we represent them by linking as edges right so we'll have the vertex list we'll have the adjacent matrix right so now let's see how we'll implement depth first search so what we'll do we'll start from a node we'll start from a element so in graph like for example here we are taking it as a is a starting point it can be any point in graph right it can be b or c or d any point so let's say we are starting from the a so what we'll do we'll take a stack right and we'll put a stack a into the a into stack right so basically what will happen so here's the case that we'll put a into stack so here we have the stack and as well as we'll print the a so we'll say okay we have visited the a we'll mark a is a visited element and we'll put into in stack and now in the next iteration we'll we'll take the peak of the this stack and we'll check that if there is any neighbor i will will take check if there is any neighbor which is not visited yet and if it is not visited then put that into a stack if it is and if there is no element so just pop out that element right so for example in this case we have a so now we'll take peak of this stack which is a we'll check if there is any neighbor so yes b is not visited and b has also is so what we will do if this is the case we'll put here b into stack and as well as we'll print b here so that we have visited and we'll mark b as a visited also 
now again we'll take a peak of this tick which is b and again we'll check if there is any element of b which is not visited so yes because there was a also but a is visited right so now we'll go into c because c comes first so now here it will go first so now we'll add we'll print c as well as we'll add c into we'll push c into stack now it will check for the c because c has only one element b which is already visited so it will return minus one right so minus one means pop out the c so now we'll pop out the c now it will check for the b so now a and c are already covered now it will check for d because d is already linked so now it will add d into stack so now d is added so now it will check for d first it will take peak of d and it will check so because a and b are already covered so it will add e right so now it will add e into stack now it will check for the e so d is already covered for e so now it will check for f and it will add into f and similarly you can see it is also printing the element right now because it will check for f and because e is already covered e is already visited so it will pop out the f now it will check for e and d and f we have already covered so it will again pop out e now it will check for d we have already covered a b e again it will pop out now it will check for b we have already covered and at the last it will pop out a right so this is how you can see that we are we have printed the element into depth wise right so now i will show you the uh, code in java that how we are implementing depth first search on a graph so for that So here I have the DFS app. So I have the class which where I'm implementing the depth first search. So first of all, uh, I have I am implementing the graph. So what is graph? Let me show you. So you can see here that I, at the starting I'm taking that maximum vertex size can be 20. Now I will have the vertex list where I will maintain the all the vertexes so that you can see that I have the vertex type. Now what is vertex type? So vertex has the two property as we explained one property is a label and one property is watch visited. So this is very important property where which will mark that whether the element is visited or not. Right. So by default whenever we are adding any vertex so we are just adding the label as well as we are marking watch visited as false. Right. So now in the graph we'll have some so as soon as we initialize the graph we'll store uh, will will create a vertex list where we will have the uh, where we will have the maximum vertex size as 20 so right so we'll create a area of vertex list then it has the adjacency matrix so as we explained that adjacency matrix is basically the the a's between two elements right if there is a, a and if there is a's between a and b so we can say there is a adjacency matrix between 0 and 1 and 1 is 0 right so at the starting we'll have all the addition matrix at zero and now we have the n vertex so basically it will track that how many vertexes we have added into graph and now we have initialized the stack which we'll use to implement so now uh, let me show you by debugging from the starting and i'll explain you as we go further so first of all it will initialize the all the graph property as well as now it will add the vertex right so adding the vertex means we are adding the vertex into vertex list and so you can see it has added the label and was visited property right so now it will add for the other vertex as well a b c d e f right now it will add the a's so now you can see we are adding a's for 0 and 1 which is basically a b so we are uh, doing addition matrix start and end as well as the end start as one right so now it will also add edges for the other element as well so now we have created our graph we have added the vertex we have added the A's, and now we'll see our main logic of dfs so at the starting i am i am telling that my zeroth index which is a is to visit it true display vertex is means basically it's just printing the uh, label of the vertex so you can see here that it has added it has printed a and we are pushing the this a into stack now i'm checking that if stack is not empty go in this function so here we have the function 
get adjacency unvisited vertex so basically it will it will give you a vertex which is not visited so it will give you basically neighbor which is not visited right so that is why we are telling that start from 0 to n vertices and if adjacency matrix is 1 it means there is a is and the vertex is not visited means if it is a false then return j element right so what it will do basically you can see for the 1 it will return correct because the b so for a b is not visited as well as b is there is a a's so now it will give me v which is 1 which is basically the b so now v is not minus 1 so basically we are, we are this is if this is minus 1 it means all elements are visited so we'll just pop out the element else we'll put the element into visited so we'll mark the property was visited true and we'll display the vertex so now you can see we have displayed b and as well as we will add this element into stack so now again it will check and it will check for the peak so what is peak peak is peak is b right so again it will check that whether there is a element of b so yes you can see there is a c so there was a there was a age between b and c right so that is how it is giving me two element tooth index which is c so again it will uh, it will mark as c as visited and it will print c and it will push this c as well into graph so now same thing it will do for the other cases as we have explained so now you can see it has printed d now after that it is printed e and it has printed f right and at the last because we have already printed so it will keep on popping the element you can see from here it is just popping out all the element from stack right so that's it and what's the complexity of this problem so complexity is big of all the vertexes v and all the edges so in the worst case we have all the edges between the all the elements so basically the complexity is big of o, o v plus e e means edges and v means vertex right so that's it guys we have seen that what is the logic of the dfs and how we can implement for a graph in java right and if you have any doubts then please write in the comment section and we'll try to explain it and if you like the video then please like it and subscribe the channel for more such videos thank you